And if you've heard that game programming uses a lot of math, that is probably an understatement. It uses a ton of math. And one reason why I love game programming is because it requires so much math. And my undergrad degree, I went to one building, I'd learn math, and I'd go to another building, and I'd learn computer science. And never did the twain ever meet, and I wish they would have, because programming math and physics, which contains a lot of math, is a lot of fun. It's very exciting. Game programming merges the two quite beautifully. But there's a ton of math concepts and physics concepts that are good to know, but not necessary to know to make games and vice versa. So here we go. Let me, if you want to brush up on your math, I'm going to assume, you know, some algebra, hopefully linear algebra. It doesn't hurt to take a full linear algebra class. If you don't know linear algebra, you don't know vectors, I'm going to introduce them, but not necessarily at the beginning level. I'm going to assume you have some fundamentals in math. If you need to catch up and you're way behind in math, then stop this video here and be sure you understand at least a college algebra level of algebra. And then if you can, uh, brush up on linear algebra. Those are definitely two topics. Let me show you my favorite resource for, for learning those. This is KhanAcademy.org. Uh, hopefully you've heard of this gentleman and his team. They're doing amazing work in the education world showing, well, let's, let's just go here. I'll get out of the linear algebra section here. Go to the home page. He has, basically, if there's something you want to learn, he has it in here. Uh, I believe he started out with math, but I can't remember. Anyway. And, and what we're going to do in the beginning, we're going to do linear algebra. So that's where I was at, was this linear algebra. We definitely need to know vectors and vector spaces. We're going to do some matrix transforms. Now you can sit and watch these videos all in a row. I'm going to take a different approach. We're going to need something. I'm going to explain it a little bit, refer you to Khan Academy. We're going to code it up and use it. Hopefully this stuff will make sense as we go along. Let me just click on vectors and spaces here. So we definitely need vectors. You need to understand linear combinations, that's important. Linear dependence, independence, yeah, that's good. Uh, subspace, yeah, kind of. Dot and cross products, we're going to use this a ton. And matrices as well, not necessarily null space. And then let's look at matrix transformations, functions, linear transformations. Linear transformation examples, we're going to do a lot of these. Um, we're going to do a lot of those. So you can sit and whatever approach works best for you, you can go through his material, you can do the math on the side. Uh, if you're like me, you'll probably get really bored really fast because it's just math and math and math. And I like to take math, apply it, see it do something in code, go back, learn a little more, and incrementally uh, just math, code, math, code, math, code, instead of give me all this math or let me just fight all this code kind of thing. So we're gonna, I'm going to take that incremental approach here. Let's get started. I'm going to put Khan Academy away. Here is a tool I've built, and it, this looks like a Cartesian grid, and you can think of it as a Cartesian grid for now. And what this shows is, let me drag this out a little bit and drag this. I don't know, I put that there, take that up. Okay, so if you notice here, I have a, the syntax, the typical syntax for vectors. I believe Khan uses this syntax, but basically, if we have a vector that's, let's say we have a vector for comma 3, we denote the vector here. These are the components of the vector, and then this, the angle brackets here denote the vector. So 4, comma 3 would be, let's, let's switch color here to green. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. So the vector 4, comma 3 in our Cartesian grid here, that would be the vector 4, comma 3. Yes, looks like an arrow. An arrow. Why not? We think of them as arrows. That works for me. I hope that works for you. Uh, there's all sorts of different things that vectors can be, but in game programming, we rely pretty much on the fact that they're arrows. Two important facts that we rely on, and this is true in linear algebra, they have magnitude and a direction. Okay, And magnitude, you can think of as maybe the length of the vector, and the direction is definitely which way this vector is pointing. So I could do a vector this way, yeah, and its magnitude is shorter than this vector's magnitude and its direction is definitely different from that vector as well. Okay, so here's the syntax. I got my angle brackets here. So these two sliders control this first vector. Okay, I'll mark that as number one. So if I grab this slider 3.6, you can see here that we're going over 1, 2, 3.6. 
and then we go up to 1.25. So 1.25, and look, this first blue vector is this vector right here. I can, I can increase the y, and you see as I increase the y component of my vector, it goes up and up and up and up. And I can also bring it down. In fact, I can take it down into the negative zone, and it goes down. Okay, now these other two, let's do, well, I don't know, there's the red, green, I already used green, I'll just go with blue. These other two sliders, note that I put them between two angle brackets, and so these sliders denote the second vector here, this is vector 2, vector 2. And vector 2 is 1 over in the x and 2.9 on the y, so 1 over in the x and 1, 2.9 in the y, so you see here this is our second vector right there. And right now we've selected to add the two vectors. So if you go back to the Khan Academy videos, adding a vector, I take this vector and when I add two vectors it's the same as putting the tail of the second vector to the tip of the first vector. And so this vector added with this vector gives me this vector. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, what are these other numbers hanging out over here? This one here and this one here. Well, this asterisk in Programmingville, asterisk means multiplication. So that also that's going to show us scalar multiplication. For example, let me bring this down to, oh, let's take it to 1. And this one I'm going to bring to 1, 1. So you see this first vector now is 1 in the x, 1 in the y. But then we're going to take this scalar, which is basically a number, a floating point number, a single number, and I'm going to hit this vector, which is a two component, vector 2D, vector, I'm going to hit it with this. Let's, let's do two times this vector, what do you think will happen? Let me bump this up to two, watch, what, watch the vector as I do so, okay, there's two, and we've essentially doubled the length of this vector. The vector is still pointing the same direction. The directional information was stored completely in the components, but then I doubled each component. So it's 2 times 1, and then 2 times 1 here. So 1, 2, 1, 2. Let's, let's, let's do a little jazzier example. I'm going to take my 2.9. Let's, let's put it to a, let's go negative, I don't know, negative 3. I bring that over to a negative three. All right, so this vector one, two, or wait, let's see. Sorry, this vector over one, down one, two, three. That makes sense. I'm going to bump this to a two. What's that? How's that going to change this vector? Pause the video and think about it if you need to. If I bump this slider up to two, that's going to double the length of this second vector. So, so where's it going to end up? Well, well, let's just. Uh, where do you think it's going to end up? I'm not going to tell you. Let's let me, let me grab the slider here and move it. Okay, you see that? So essentially, we had our original vector here, and it's like I took I took two of our original vector, put them tip to tail, like so, and we ended up down here. Which hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So tail to tip, tail to tip. We have two of our original vector, and thus we end up right. Here, and the reason we end up there is because we're adding one of the, or two of these, two of our one ones, we're adding two of those together. So here's one, here's two, and then we add two of these vectors, pop, pop, and we end up right here. Well, our resulting vector, notice our red result here comes off the origin. Vectors, yes, we move them around, we put them in arbitrary places, but something, if you can just get it in your head, I had a hard time, I struggled with this a long time, but whenever we transform vectors, things will do much later. It's always with respect to the origin. Okay, standard position is what we call it when we draw the vector with its tail to the origin. So, so you'll, you'll often see your math teachers, they'll draw vectors out here, they'll do vectors out here, which is fine, you can move vectors, it doesn't hurt to move them around, but whenever we do a mathematical operation, like doubling them, then, then yeah, I mean, you could think of this as doubling, but when we get to transformations, just remember that those have to happen with respect to the origin right here. Okay, now I don't want to leave you completely hanging. I, I'm going to go back to Khan Academy here. I definitely recommend, strongly recommend you go, if you don't understand vectors, go through the introduction to vectors, 
vectors example. And then right here, he talks about what I just did, scaling a vector. Okay, here's the scale of the vector. And then he also has adding vectors, which is what we're doing right here. So again, I just made this tool, this graphical tool for me to learn how these vectors work and I can play with them. I'm going to come back to this tool a lot. But for now, we need to we need to code up these vectors in our game engine and use them to move that triangle around. So I'm going to leave this tool and in the next video we're going to code up a basic vector. It is something we're going to use all over the place so in several games. So we will put this vector class inside of our engine project and not in our game project. So we'll do that in the next video.